Good afternoon, students. Today, we are going to start learning about things in unit three, which is our geometry unit. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what's known as nature's strongest shape, which are the triangles. So we're going to talk about the triangle angles and the triangle sides in this video. <clears throat> if this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and pause and copy down um, this template into your notebook um, before we move on so we can talk about the triangle angles. All right, so a triangle... There's a variety of different triangles, I guess I should say. A triangle at its core has three sides, and depending on the type of triangle, some triangles are known as equilateral triangles, where all their sides are the same length. Some are known as right triangles, where one of their angles is a right angle. Some are known as acute angles, where the big um, all the angles are less than 90 degrees. Sometimes there's an obtuse triangle, where there's an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. There's all these different kinds of triangles. There's even more than I didn't than I just didn't say. Um, but when it comes to triangle angles, no matter what kind of triangle we're looking at, all of the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. If we were to take, my eight looks sideways, sorry about that. If we were to take all of the angles in any triangle and add them up, no matter what size triangle, whether it's teeny tiny or huge, like the size of a table or even the size of like a building, all of the angles in a triangle, all three add to 180 degrees. So if we're looking at a triangle and let's say they tell us that one of the angles is 14 degrees, the other is 70, but we don't know what the third one is, we can use that information to kind of help us out. So if we know they're all supposed to equal 180 degrees, 14 plus 70 is 84. So if I did 180 minus 84, that is equivalent to 96 degrees. So the angle for the third angle would just be 96 degrees. So I can take the other two angles and the sum, knowing that it's all supposed to be equivalent to 180 and figure out what uh, the missing angle measurement is. Sometimes, because we've learned how to use equations now, sometimes they tell us that like one of the angles is twice as large as the other angle. Um, and so using this information, we can set up and solve an equation with our um, our friends, the pose, in order to kind of figure it out. So like we have an example like this. This is a triangle with angles A, B, and C. Whenever you see like a greater than sign, or excuse me, this is a less than sign with like a little curve slash through it, that just means angle. So this is saying find angle A and angle B. And if you look, they tell us that angle A is equal to 2X, angle B is X, and angle C is 45, which may be a little bit complex, but we can set up an equation. We know that all of the angles in a triangle have to be 180 degrees. So we can set our equation equivalent to 180. And then I know angle A plus B plus C is going to make 180 degrees. So I can fill in what I have. So I know A is equivalent to 2X, angle B is equivalent to X, and C is 45 degrees. So this equation here, 2x plus x plus 45, all equals 180. And I can now use this equation to solve for the value of x and then in turn figure out what is the measure of angle A and what is the measure of angle B. So if I combine my like terms, this is going to be 3x plus 45 equals 180. And then um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides using my subtraction property of equality. And I'm left with 3x is equivalent to 135. And then if I divide by 3 using my depot property, um, 135 divided by 3 is going to be 45. So that means x is equivalent to 45. And I use my depot property. I didn't label it. So that's not my final answer. If I have to find angle A and angle B, I'm going to go back and plug in 45 into um, the values for X. So angle A is equivalent to 2X, which is 2 times 45, which is 90 degrees. And then angle B is just equivalent to X, and X is 45. 
So angle B is going to be 45 degrees and angle A is going to be 90 degrees and angle 45, or I'm sorry, angle C is already given us 45 degrees. I can check my answer by going back and plugging it in. If I do two times 45 plus another 45 plus another 45, I should get 180. So all I did, even though I did it very quickly, was I just set up an equation with what they give me for the values of my angles, had it equivalent to 180. And then I went back and plugged it in in order to figure out what the value of each angle was. Now, sometimes the problem may ask, you know, just find X. So if the question was just find X, then that would have been my final answer. I, I wouldn't have needed to go back and figure out the value of uh, angle A and angle B. But because they asked me that, I had to go back and plug it into the values for each angle. So the main thing to remember is all angles add to 180 degrees. And now we know how we can set up an equation to find the missing angle in a triangle if we so need it. Um, the other thing we're going to learn in this video is something a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more complex, but not, not as bad, um, is we're going to talk about the sides of a triangle. So a triangle has three sides and there's a rule that triangles follow in order to make sure that all of the measurements in a triangle actually work, because you'll know, like if you get certain measurements, if you try to combine them and make a triangle, you may not have pieces that can kind of like touch and meet and form a triangle. So the rule is with a triangle is that the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third side. If this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and take a pause and copy down that statement as well as the two examples here. <clears throat> and as I was saying, Again, the sum of any two sides must be greater than the third side. So that means I need to be able to add up any two sides of my triangle. And when I do that, it has to be bigger than the third side. If it's not, even if it's just one instance, then that means that those measurements could not fit together to make a triangle. So we're going to look at two examples. So the first example is we have a triangle with the measurement length of three, four, and five. And you can think of whatever units you want, inches, feet doesn't really matter. But if I was to test out this theorem is what it's called, I'm going to add up all my pairs of sides and make sure that they're bigger than the third side. So I'm going to start with three and five. So I'm checking to see, does three plus five, is that greater than four? And the answer is yes. Three plus five is eight. Eight is greater than four. Now I'm going to check five and four. Does five plus four, is that greater than three? And the answer is yes, five plus four is nine, nine is greater than three. And now I'm gonna look at my um, next pair, which is three and four. So does three plus four, is it greater than um, five? And the answer is yes, because three plus four is seven and seven is greater than five. All right, and let's look at the second example. So you'll notice that th these three sides, um, before we move on to the se second example, um, they all work. We added up any two sides and they were all greater than the third side. So that means that if I had a measurement of three, four, and five, I could form it together to make a triangle. Let's look at the next example. So we have one, one, and eight. So I'm going to take any two sides, add them together, and make sure it's greater than the third side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take eight and add it to this one that's over here on the left-hand side. So eight plus one, I am checking to see if that is greater than one. Eight plus one is nine. Nine is greater than one. So that is a partial way of determining if the triangles, um, if the sides will work. We have, but we have to try all of them because even if one of them doesn't work, then that means it doesn't work for the whole thing. So I'm going to try eight and the other one on the right-hand side, it's going to be the same thing, right? Eight plus one is nine. Nine is greater than one. And I'm going to try my last pair, one plus one. One plus one, I am checking to see if that is greater than eight. One plus one is two. And two is actually not greater than eight. So that means that because of this situation, that means that this cannot be three sides of a triangle. If you really think about it, if something had a length of one and something had a length of one and something had a length of eight, the two sides wouldn't be long enough to kind of touch and create a point, right? It would look something more like this rather than, um, an actual formed triangle. So sometimes what they'll do when they, is they'll just give you a list of numbers. They might put a list like three, four, and five, and you need to just make your pairs and determine, is this, um, does this fit the theorem? If I add any two sides, is it greater than the third side? 
So these are just some unique properties about triangles. Remember, all the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. We need to be able to add any two sides of the triangle, and it has to be greater than the third side in order for the measurements to work. Um, now, to practice kind of what you've learned, there are three practice questions I would like for you to do. You can go ahead and take a moment to pause and get them all copied down. So the questions are, in triangle ABC, if angle A is X, angle B is 91, and angle C is 37, you're going to find X or find the measure of angle A. In question two, you have a triangle. You have one angle is 10 degrees, one is 5X, and one is 42. And your goal in this one is just to find X. You don't need to find the measure of the angle after you find X. It's just what would X be, um, knowing what you know about the angles in a triangle. And then the last statement is, um, if you have two, three, and six, could these be sides of a triangle, knowing that any two sides have to be greater than the third side? Test out each pair, you know, test out two and three, three and six, two and six, and see, do they work? Um, when you are done, feel free to check your answers in the table of contents, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Goodbye!